the music scene in Philadelphia. Come on, it's strong. It's been strong for decades. It's absolutely iconic, and there's several iconic places as oh, well yeah. in the city that you can visit to kind of take it all in. Well, one of the best is down on South Broad. Mm -hmm. It's the Clef Club, and wait till you see their archives. I don't care what hip hop you say, hip hop or, 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 or whatever. Whatever. It all started with right there. the jazz. It all started with the orchestra, Duke Ellington, Lena, Sarah Vaughan. Before it was actually the Clef Club, it was Union, Black Musician Union 274. When they built the Clef Club here on this site in 1995, okay, one of the things that was part of that was all those records that was uh, gendered or collected, the records of musicians' performances, the record of musicians' employment records, also the membership information, all of that was in 274. So all of that was transported over to the club club. So the club club created a special space for those archival materials to be stored. It's important to have history, man. You know, it's important to have history of this, of the uh, knowledge of this music. Pull these things out, you know, they look like books, almost, right? You open it up and it's four or five albums there. Yes. Right, right there, this will tell you right here. They, even the same here, they tell you it was in the 50s and the 40s, you know. So. Like, do we even have anything to play these on? Oh, yes. Do you organize these, man? Most of the time, I do. I try to keep them organized. You know, the pianist with the pianist, saxophones with the saxophones, the guitarist with the guitarist. That's how I like to keep mine, you know. Early monk. Preservation was very, very, very important. Uh, uh, presentation, so of course, you know, musician has to perform. And then the most important thing that we continue right now is education. My young people say, well, who taught John Coltrane? You know, so we can find out through that history, either oral history or printed history, who are those people? And I think this is our oldest one. They dedicated a space, and this is that space for archives. So when that is damaged in any way, you know, that's when we have to act immediately. So what we try to do is find partners, number one, that we trust. <laughs> number two, someone who had the same idea of the value of the materials that we have housed in our archives. Well, number one choice was Bloxton. And my relationship with the Clef Club goes way back. And when Lovett approached me about uh, having custody of their uh, archives, we were very excited about it. I have a lot of respect uh, for local 274, jazz musicians in general, and the work that Lovett is doing at the Clef Club. Uh, there were more than 50 so-called colored locals in the United States in various jurisdictions. And um, Local 274 was very important for jazz musicians and musicians in general in Philadelphia back until the teens and the 20s and 30s. In order to play live, you had to be a member of, of the American Federation of Musicians because they would have agents go around and if they asked you for your union card and you couldn't produce it, that's not you off the stage. You couldn't perform. All of these prominent musicians that came out of, uh, that were members of Local 274, Dizzy Gillespie, uh, Lee Morgan, John Coltrane, uh, Nina Simone. I could go, the list goes on and on and on. Early on, among workers, they were some of the earliest unionized professionals. I ain't gonna remember everything I put up here. Wow. <laughs> I know. This, this is, um, wow, this, that's deep. The materials in the Clef Club archives are unique and invaluable to scholars and students and members of the Clef Club because they can come up here and actually look at primary source material that you can't find any place else. By the way, some of the archives are for the public to view. You simply go to the Bloxon Collection on Temple's campus. Look at